Zephaniah chapter 2. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. That's a nation that they don't want to. They don't care to. They don't have a desire. Before the decree, that's a law, be in force. Before the day pass as the chaff, the chaff is the waste of the wheat, blown away. Before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. Before the day of the Lord, now we, we look at the day of the Lord, but look at this one. The day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So this is the day of the Lord, but this is the day of the Lord's anger. I'll see it again. Seek ye the Lord. So before anger, you better seek God. It's a warning. All ye meek of the earth. So this is all. This is Gentile and Jew. Which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So there's an anger coming of God a day. And God's like, you know, if you seek him, if you look to him, you can bypass it. Then we're going to get to a bunch of nations. Judgment. This would be looking at the second advent. For gazes shall be forsaken. Go on, everybody leaves. Ashkelon, a desolation, empty. Nothing. They shall drive out Ashdod at noonday, the hot of the day. Get out of here. Ekron shall be rooted up. You know, where you grab that plant and you pull it up by the root. And it's not going to grow. Woe. Oh, here we go. There's that word. Three letters. Woe. On the inhabitants of the sea coast. The nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you. Oh. That's that sword that's coming out of the mouth of Jesus in the second advent. There's something about that sword in the voice of the Lord we read last night. Of the mightiness of Genesis 1, God said, let there be. God's going to say something. And it's a possibility they're going to be dead before they're trampled by his horse. But Joel says, as far as us, I mean, I forget what, how it said, but if we're going to be attacked with a sword or a spear, we're going to have no hurt. I don't know what's going to happen at this second. Now, it's going to be active. Old Cana, the land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee. That there should be no inhabitants. Nobody's going to be there. As far as the land of Philistines, you bring it up today, that would be the PLO. That's that little strip of land giving Israel a hard time today. That the UN and the president keep on trying to, you know, give them, give them more land, give them more land. You realize if Joshua would have done with Israel, what God told them to do, there would be no giants, there would be no Philistines with Saul and David. But even King Saul, when he was told with the Amalekites, he only did half the job. 
And God, in his mercy and laughter, if I can say that reverently, who's the one that came and told David that King Saul and his sons were killed? An Amalekite. And the sea coast shall be dwellings of cottages, little houses, for shepherds and folds for flocks. So along the sea coast, shepherds and their sheep are going to live. Got to be a brutal land, all the grass for the sheep, well watered, well wells to water the sheep. I'm going to have little houses. And the coast shall be from the remnant of the house of Judah. There's Judah. A remnant of Judah. Well, that could be from the Babylonians. That could be at the end of tribulation. They shall feed upon, thereupon, in the houses of Ashkelon, so like they came into Cana the first time, the houses, the vineyards, the orchards were already there for them. Oh, here's a nice house. I'll take it. Only thing is, in the, in the millennium, it, the land has already been pre-portioned according to Ezekiel. Shall lie down in the evening. For the Lord their God shall visit them, second advent, and turn away their captivity, second advent. Why do people say, I don't like the Old Testament? Or oh, look at the book of Revelation. Haven't we been seeing the book of Revelation? Have we not seen prophecies that have not happened? You know, people, prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. Have you ever opened the book of Zephaniah? Have you ever opened the book of Amos? Have you ever opened the book of... Make, uh, uh, Micah and you realize what we're reading there I mean there are 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ they all came to pass there's a lot more prophecies yet to come the next prophecy spoken about by Paul is the rapture of the church I have heard the reproach of Moab, that's Lot, and the revilings of the children of Ammon, that's Lot, whereby they have reproached my people, Israel, and magnified themselves against their border. They're, 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 they're making their border more and more and more. God gave them, he told Moses, don't touch that, I've given that to the children of Moab. Don't touch that, I've given that to the children of Ammon. But when Babylon comes into Judah, Moab comes in, turns against Israel or Judah. We read about that. They're going to magnify their borders. God's like, no, 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 no. And you realize the United Nations is helping them. The United Nations and the President of the United States are making Israel smaller and smaller and smaller where God in the Bible says they must be bigger and bigger and bigger. Like we did the study today about incest and sodomy. God said, I said the church age, witness to them, tell them the gospel. But God said in the law, you are to put them to death. I took you over to Romans chapter 13 where it said the government is in charge of the execution. You're not doing what the Bible tells you. The Bible says that land is specifically Israel. You're not doing it. The United Nations ain't doing it. And I have lived over 50 years and I've heard in the news where, you know, they have a wall in Israel, and they move that wall more and more and more and more for Gaza, Gaza. God's not pleased with that. That's cursing Israel. And U.S. presidents have done that. 
Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, oh, there, there's God making an oath by him. God never lies. God never dies. You know, I could make an oath and say, so help me God, and drop dead today and won't be able to fill that oath. That's why I'm supposed to say, as the Lord will. God does not have to say, as I will. God says, I swear by me. It's for sure. I think it's Hebrew says, when God couldn't swear any better, he swore by himself. And I've given the illustration over and over. God walks in the courtroom, they give him a King James Bible, Bob. He puts his hand on that Bible. They say, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me, me. And my son Jesus, who is the Word. Because there are references in the Bible where God cannot, will not, is not able to lie. Satan, on the other hand, the God of Israel. Again, we go over. Who's your God? Who? All right. God bless America. One nation under God. All right. Let, 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 let's settle it down right now. Which God is the God of, of God bless America? Which God, one nation under God? Well, the KKK can't say of Israel. Some of the Africans will say, well, the black Israelites. The Catholics ain't going to say Israel. The Mormons will say, well, we're the new Israel. We're the replacement theologists. The congregational church will say, we're the, we're the, the great vision of the great hope of, of Massachusetts. And they went in the law and did what the law said and started putting witches to death and all that. Well, see, so, you know, they did wrong. They were putting people to death because they went against the church, not because they were a witch or anything. And when I say that we're going to put these, these, these sexual perverts to, to, to death, we had to give them two or three trials of their peers and of the judge. And when they had been proclaimed as guilty two or three times where the law says two or three is a witness... Then you execute. You don't let them march down the street. You know, listen, there, there are now religions in Florida are suing because it's religious freedom that you can't have an abortion. God's going to nail us. God is going to hammer. I hope the rapture happens beforehand. I believe one of them, I am not I can't remember. I have to go back and read it. Surely Moab shall be as Sodom. They outright curse Israel. Where do you think America is going to stand if Moab is going to be like Sodom? You know, in America, we have people who break into your house and kill you and rob you. Kidnap you, rape you. I mean, with Lot, all they want to do is have sex. And you can't call the police because there's not enough police officers. And it gets me sick to see these videos. These cops, they're dancing with the kids and playing basketball with the kids. Uh, wait a minute, I thought you didn't have enough police officers for me to be protected. And then you put on your your police car, oh, you know, to protect and serve. Crapola. When you gotta send three police officers for a guy preaching on the street, I'm sorry, no, I'm not going to say it. The children of Ammon as Gomorrah. That's Lot's children. How did Lot's children start? Let's get dad drunk. 
Hey, I slept with Dad last night. Let's get him drunk for you, sis. I just read about that in Leviticus 20... I forget what chapters they were. 18 and 20. We just went through that. We saw how in America and in the world it's happening today. Incest. Raping in the home. Child abuse. Even the breeding of the nettles, kind of weed. Salt pits, that, you know, it's... It describes as tar pits in Genesis 13, I think it is. They fell in the tar pit. Here's salt pits. Probably from the Jordan. A perpetual desolation forever is going to be empty. Now there's going to be life brought to parts of the Jordan through the temple and that river, Ezekiel tells us. But there are also places where the salt is going to gather, Ezekiel tells us, and there's going to be no life. The residue of my people, Israel, shall spoil them. Because they spoiled Israel when Judah, I mean, when Babylon came in. You're going to reap what you sow. And the raiment of my people, Israel, shall possess them. Israel's going to get the land of Moab and the land of Ammon one day. Check out a map. That, that has been drawn a proper one of what that land's going to look like when Solomon had it, and then what that land's going to look like when Israel gets it. And then take a look what is given to them today by the United Nations, by the United States, by England. The Belfort Declaration and all. Oh, you get why, man. We got to give some to Jordan. This shall they have for their pride. Moab and Ammon. America's got pride. Because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of both. Cursing God's people will get a curse. And they're bragging about it. The Lord will be terrible unto them. For he will famish all the gods of the earth. Now we're going after everybody. All the gods. Like he did in Egypt. And men shall worship him. Second advent. Millennium. Everyone in his place. Ezekiel says the land will be divided in such a such a way. Even all the isles of the heathen, Gentiles. There will be Gentiles in the millennium. They'll be out in the islands and all over. Ye Ethiopians. Also, ye, have sh ye shall be slain by my sword. He will stretch out his hand against the north. Now we don't know who that north is. But I'll tell you, whoever that north is, in Russia or, or whoever, I'll tell you one thing the Bible says. They're going to be in trouble. And uh, now watch this. And dr destroy Assyria. We're going to go back into history. And will make Nineveh desolation. That was in 612 BC. We read about that in Nahum. So Zephaniah prophesied with Nahum about Nineveh. So this is before 612 BC. This is at least 
2,600 years right now as it stands. Terry, but stay and wait out. If there's one thing the Bible says about Nineveh, it's going to be desolate, it's going to be destroyed, it's going to, you know what Nineveh is today? If God fulfilled that prophecy, if God fulfilled the 48 prophecies of the first coming of Jesus Christ, Oh, the Bible's not scientific enough. The flocks shall lie down in the midst of her, Nineveh. Why? Because they curse Israel. But God told them, yeah, Syria could say, okay, God, Jehovah, you want us to attack your people, it says, whoever curses your people is going to get a curse. Thank you very much, but we'll pass. Why don't you give Babylonia a phone call? I think they'll do it. No one is forced. I heard a preacher say, Oh, there's no such thing as free will. I hate that expression. Assyria and Babylon, they did not have to do what, what God asked them to do. But since they went and did it, and the Bible says, I will curse them that curse you, they get a curse. Well, they obeyed God. Not really, because God gave them an option. I had one time when I, I was I was in junior high, so I was like I guess 14, 15 years old. I was working at an automotive place. And I was given an option. They had used cars and they worked on cars. The owner told me, he said, well, we want coffee. And, you know, we're going to get me coffee. I could take any car I wanted in the lot and go drive down to Dunkin' Donuts. I'd say, I'm very bad. Six miles one way, maybe, I don't know. To a 14 or 15 year old boy, I was a boy, they said there's the keys to the cars, all kinds of cars. I could take any car I wanted and go get coffee. I walked. And got the coffee. Because if a cop pulled me over. If there's two places where I live. That you don't do anything illegal. As far as car. It's Waterford Police. And Groton City Police. And believe me. I've been pulled over by both of them. I had the option to break the law. And I could have got away with it. You don't know. And if I did take a car and the cops pulled me over, what was I going to say? My boss? My boss would not be in the saddle. It would be me. The flock shall lie down and miss her and all the beasts of the nation. Plural. Both the comrade, the bitter, these are unclean animals, shall lodge in the upper lentils of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows, because there's nobody there to scare them. It's a ghost town. Desolation shall be in the threshold. For he shall uncover the cedar work. All the work and all that. And they, you know, they cover it, wallpaper, whatever they do, gold and silver. Within time, it's going to wear away. It's going to fall apart. It's going to decay. It's going to... 
You've seen old old barns from New England. You've seen somewhere a house where it has not been attended to. This is a rejoicing city, Nineveh, verse 13. America rejoices. Yeah, number one, yeah, number one. I'm proud to be American. China's not too happy with us. Korea ain't too happy with us. You don't want to mess with them. It took nuclear bombs for Japan to say, all right. If Japan had nuclear weapons, they would just launch them right back over. More so. You know why we lost Vietnam? You know why we lost Korea? Because those people over there, they don't quit. We quit. That said in their heart. Now watch Lucifer. I am. And there is none beside me. That's America. You, you want to put America, you see that I am? Say Uncle Sam. We're the greatest nation. We don't even have stuff made in America no more. How has she become a desolation? There are many places of great history in America today, and they're, they're ghost towns. They're finished. They're done. A place for beasts to lie down in. Everyone that passes by her shall hiss and wag his head. You're a great nation, aren't you? Where, where are you today? What are you today? And if you don't think it's so, speak to Sodom, speak to Gomorrah, speak to Babylon. Speak to Babel. Speak to Nineveh. Speak to the ruins of, of Rome. They'll tell you, and they'll tell you, history repeats. 